Well, welcome to Lazy Days RV in Mesa, Arizona. And this is something of a little bit of a homecoming for me because a little over 20 years ago, I was working with the dealer that built this entire facility from the ground up. And it's kind of interesting to return back and see how much things have changed and how much things have stayed the same. But at any rate, today we're going to be doing an inspection on a very nice uh, motorhome from Newmark. Now, an out-of-state viewer did request that I do an inspection on this 2021 Ventana from Newmar. And uh, I feel like we've done more than enough inspections on Newmar. I want to change it up a little bit this time. Well, some of my inspections are quite annoying to some of my viewers. And then sharing these RVs can also be annoying to a lot of my viewers, too. A lot of my solar content can be very annoying to my viewers. So I'm going to try to uh, make three groups happy by making everybody unhappy. Because rumor has it. Not everybody's been a huge fan with my video content lately, and I don't make any plans about making videos. I just see things that I think it was fun to share, and I want to share it with you guys. So this is what I came up with. But I had no idea when I agreed to do the inspection on this Ventana that the previous owner did a huge upgrade to the electrical system on board. And it gives me the rare opportunity to speak very highly of the installer of this system. And I don't think I've ever done a job this nice or this clean. And that's why I wanted to share it with you guys because I could learn a lot from it. And I'm sure everybody else could learn from this too. So this is a 2021 Ventana. And this is a 3407 floor plan. And right in here in this front compartment is the nicest installation of a solar setup I've ever seen. And it makes me feel a lot of shame for my own work. But so much pride in the installer that did it that I wanted to share it with you guys. So you can still see the original Magnum inverter right there in the frame rail. There's a lot of money just sitting there not being used. But they have upgraded to a Victron MultiPlus 3000. Now this is a 12 volt system, so it is not 24 volt or 48 volt. But you can see they have two solar charge controllers, which should give you some indication of the amount of solar power that's on the roof. And then you just have the Lynx distribution, distribution center above. Uh, over here, you can see they do have the Servo GX, so you can control this from, remotely from your phone, from the touchscreen inside, and even across the internet from wherever. This uh, beautiful wire run, I mean, it does a great job of keeping all the wires in place. You can see all the overcurrent protection that's down there. And even over here, you can see they have a smart battery protector built in. I have nothing but praise for the installer of this system. My understanding is this whole upgrade that they put in this is uh, north of $30,000, which I can see the quality within this. I would recommend never storing anything in this compartment. Even though there's an awful lot of space in here, I would have liked to see them put up some plexiglass or something to actually separate this from any storage that anybody put in. Because we do want to keep some good airflow around here. The only thing that I thought was a little bit strange was this great big huge hole right there. Uh, through this back wall. That gives me the opportunity to show you uh, the second thing that impressed me about this installation. So on a new Mar, the house batteries are usually located over here, and it's usually about six or eight six volt batteries that are wet cell batteries, and they went with two batteries, and these are Listronics batteries, part number 77221 so these are about 320 amp hour batteries so because it's 12 volt or we put those in parallel uh, we get to double the amperage to 640 amp hours i mean to my eye i know it's not my money and these are like four forty five hundred dollars a piece you had room for at least two more in here but that's not what really impressed me when i first looked at it i said oh that's kind of a jank way to uh put some cable run through there but then i followed it back to this pipe they use some, looks to be about three inch PVC as conduit all the way back to that opening on the other side and then sealed it all off using that uh, foam padding right there. So that's a pretty stout installation when it comes to a, a cable run for the battery cables. They still are utilizing a lot of the overcurrent protection that's built into the battery here, but you can still see they do have uh, the fuses over here. Maybe I would do something different than that strap right there, but it is working. So if the inverter, solar charge controller, and battery installation is something I wanted to show you, that only leaves one more part and that's up on the roof. So we're gonna do a roof inspection either way, even though we're not doing an inspection together on this 2021 Ventana. 
and it's the roof that I really wanted to show you guys anyways. Because even though I like to think I know everything and I'm the most brilliant person in the world, everybody can come up with their own solutions and the most obvious solution. And what I thought was a pretty fun solution in a previous video when it comes to solar installation, somebody already came up with it and did uh, an even better job than I would have done. Now that doesn't mean I won't have some critique for the whole installation too. We will be using the service ladder that is mounted by Numar on the back here. And take a look at this. We have, count them up, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 solar panels. These are 200 watt panels from Bouge RV. And the first thing I noticed climbing up the ladder was that this uh, panel is shattered, it's tempered, it's still working, but the glass has been broken, so that is on my notes. The second thing I noticed is how brilliantly it was installed utilizing the awning mounts, like I said in a previous video, that that seemed like a pretty good uh, place to mount solar panels if you wanted to put solar panels on a roof. Now I'm very interested to show you the rest of it up there. The uh, third thing I've noticed is that it wasn't completely built for service access on this roof. There are limitations and compromises that have to be made with any installation and getting from the back cap here over to there is going to be a little bit of a uh, hop over where you'd have to get a ladder to go from the middle of the coach too. All right, so nobody saw how I did this. But you can see these are just a standard aluminum angle that you get from uh, the local big box store. They span all the way over to here and rest on this angle over here. Now this angle is um, bolted to this other angle that's bolted to the gusset supports on the valances over here. And the same supports that are for the awnings over on this side. Now I also will point out these awnings did not fully close. That's part of the ins uh, inspection. That's two things that we found on our non-inspection video. But back to the solar array installation. That means that none of this has any holes down into the roof whatsoever. It's mounted to this very sturdy bracket right here. Now in the middle, they came up with a very similar solution that I did on my buddy's travel trailer, is that they needed a little bit of support to keep that. Probably wasn't necessary, but it's not a bad thing to do. Put a center support to keep the uh, rail right there, spanning the, the, the length from bending. They didn't mount this with any screws. I think they just used some uh, VHB double-sided tape. But whoever installed this system did a brilliant job of incorporating 12 200 watt panels uh, mounting the system without putting a single hole in the roof to mount these solar panels. And because it's below the sight line of the awning on that side and the uh, balance panels on that side, you can't see any of this from the ground down below. And because it's up off the deck itself, the ACs, the vents, the antennas aren't really going to be casting any shadows on the uh, solar panels themselves. So it's a very efficient system. And again, because it's off the deck, we can easily inspect underneath for any uh, problems with the sealant. And that means we can maintain all the sealant underneath here just fine too and inspect the fiberglass roof itself. Now over here, they did make allowances for servicing the AC unit. And I can do a one giant step over to get to here. We can get to the uh, skylight easily, all the awning components, and even the sewer vents. Uh, it's interesting how they laid this out. If they would have gone just a little bit higher, they could have gone over the top of those to get even more panels up here. But I'm not trying to spend other people's money because everything does add up to something. If it was my system, I think I probably would have tried to get one more solar panel and delete that TV antenna. One more solar panel over here too. Because we aren't going to have to purchase any more aluminum racking from doing any of that. And we probably have enough space to pull this back against this vent if I wanted to. And add one over here and one over there. This space over here is a little bit of a jump from that section over here to over here again, but they did make enough allowance to just barely service the AC unit if we need to, which I do appreciate. I can take a step over there and I can almost inspect the rest over here. They're just about kissing the front cap with the panels. And I really can't express how delighted I would to see such a beautiful installation of a solar panels on the roof of this, utilizing a system uh, and design that I think I would have come up with too. Uh, the only thing I want to remind everybody is when it comes to doing a solar installation, always add more solar than you think you're going to need. 
because sometimes it's cloudy, sometimes it's rainy either than you think it's going to be. And having more solar power is never a bad thing. If you don't need it, you don't have to use it. But if you need it, it's really nice to have it there. So I just want to do a highlight and, and showcase this beautiful solar installation and give other people that might be watching some ideas what the capabilities of a Numar roof are or any roof that has awnings with brackets on this side, maybe awnings on this side or just the brackets on this side for the valance panel. Without a doubt, if it were me and I was using this much aluminum, I'd probably forego the local big box store and instead go to a metal supply house to get all this angle aluminum. It'll be a heck of a lot cheaper. Those big box stores have a huge markup on angle aluminum, angle steel, anything steel or anything metal related like that. Now I'm going to go ahead and get off the roof uh, safely and then we'll address the one question maybe everybody has. Other than extended boondocking and dry camping uh, capabilities, why did they invest this kind of money? What else, uh, what other functionality did this system give them? And I'll give you a hint. It's uh, right there. My first question to the salesperson that was walking me through it was, why'd they put all this effort into it if it doesn't power up the roof AC? But it does. So if I come to the uh, Victron touchscreen right here, I have no power because I tripped the breaker on the 110. If you go to the menu, you can see we are discharging. And uh, we don't have a lot of loads right now. Just the TV's going, microwave turned on. I come over here to the thermostat. Go right here, turn on the living room to cool. That AC just powered up. And now we can see once that compressor turns on, you'll see that wattage increase quite a bit. There's that uh, compressor kicking in. We are definitely de uh, discharging and the voltage went from 13 whatever it was down to 12.8 on those lithium batteries because we are still just a 12 volt system. On the outside, the solar panels aren't doing anything because we're underneath the canopy, so the sun's not powering it up, so we are running completely off the batteries right now. If we were out in the sun, I suspect with that 2400 watt system that's on the roof, we wouldn't be using any battery power whatsoever. <laughs> Alright, I guess we are putting out about 200 watts of solar, and we're using about 170 amps to operate the AC currently. So I'm, I'm, I'm pleased to report it wasn't just to upgrade the system to make the refrigerator and the TVs last longer. They definitely did it to make sure the AC worked. Now the interesting thing about it is because Numar used this 110 breaker box right here, it already has a sub panel built into it. You can see they had to relabel right here what where they moved the uh, front AC to. So you can see this is the sub panel over here before the front AC was probably over here where it says not used. So they moved that over there and it looks like maybe they added the bathroom on that circuit there too. Since the original Magnum inverter right here where they left the remote panel uh, just had 110 going in, 110 going back out up to here, it was pretty easy just to, just to rewire and redistribute the wiring up here. No sub panel down below, no uh, overcurrent protection because it's all going to be up here. You have a 30 amp branch circuit that goes down to the inverter and then back up from the inverter right here on this main and then this is a sub panel off the inverter so you can see they put that breaker in and uh, yeah pretty good job some people might complain that's not the right breaker but i'm not one of those people now i don't know about you guys i thought it was pretty interesting and i thought whoever did the upgrade on the solar on the roof and the batteries down below did a fantastic job and i wanted to highlight what good work looks like and appreciate it because uh, uh, my work not, would not have been that good. However, even though I did an inspection on this, I didn't take you guys through the whole entire thing and, and show it to you, uh, I did want to leave you with one key thing to be looking for on all these modern RVs with the frameless windows on the outside. That crank open from the inside. Now on this emergency egress door that everybody likes on Newmore, it does have a crank open window. Now, a pretty common problem on these, I don't know if you can see that mounting bar. That actually mounts to the window. It's loose. It's not a very uncommon problem. On any of these windows from any of these manufacturers have that problem. Numar, Thor, Integra, Jayco, 
uh, basically all of them that use this frameless window on the outside that cranks open. So whenever you're doing an inspection, you should try to hyper retract the window to see if that rail pulls away. Once that's loose, there's nothing holding that glass against the, the frame at all and it just likes to flap around. You have to go outside with duct tape and tape, tape it down until you get it fixed. Very common problem. Thanks a lot for watching this. I hope you, maybe that solar install inspired a lot of people. And I'll give you one final look at this 2021 Ventana from Newmar. Were there a few issues on it? Yes, but nothing that substantial. It's very well maintained and very well represented by the crew here at Lazy Day here at Mesa, Arizona. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. Bye. Dang, guys, that's really cool. An Ibex RV suite. The roof has got a pitch to it at the higher on one side. Rear balcony. It's like a real tiny home. Wish I could see that a little bit better and show it with you guys. I'm surprised they don't have a mini split on it and have the roof AC still. I'm sure one day we'll take a look at one together at some point. Yeah, there's probably a lot of videos about it anyways, but it's cool.